All right, guys. Hey, uh, Elias here with Stephen. We're at Foundation Chicago in Roscoe Village. We got Coach Jerry behind the camera. Uh, once again, we're going to review uh, some techniques that we've been working on in class all week long. This is off of some guard pass that we've been working. We're not going to show the guard pass. We're going to show what happens once we end up inside mount. These are very fundamental moves. We want to be able to threaten from side mount, ideally both the near side and the far side arm, and give our opponent no good choices. So we're going to first go over a near side arm bar, and then we're going to first, uh, then secondly go over a far side if they defend their near side. So we're going to try to capitalize when they do the right thing as well. Again, we want to give them no good choices. So let's imagine I got real lucky and I passed Steven's guard and I'm sliding into side mount. I'm going to try to get this near side near and far as in relation to my body. My body is on this side of Steven's body, so I'm going to call this side near side and this side far. I'm going to lift this up and walk under. Now, my partner may or may not know it, but I'm right now with this underhook on the far side and having my, um, my leg rest under his flared near side arm, I'm threatening both of his arms. Even if I'm under and I have just pressure here with my shoulder, I have good chest assessed pressure, my butt is, is low, I'm not too far over, I'm not too far away, I'm right here, good control first. Now I'm gonna attack this near side. This near side arm is pretty exposed. As it happens, it's, it's resting under my right leg. I'm gonna switch my hips remove my hand from underneath Steven's head and place my left leg now, instead of my right, under Steven's arm. And I'm here. My rib cage is right on Steven's chest and his rib cage, good pressure here. It should, should be super comfortable. If I have my knee pointed anywhere, I want it up, this rear knee here. Now, from here, I'm gonna move my hand up slightly, step over his head, heel to his head, Walk it backwards, my arm, my triceps go up to his wrist. I shoot my hips forward, manually press back, and we have a tap. Once again, we're in cross side, and I was able to flare up his near side arm. I have an underhook and Steven's far side. It's good for control. Later, it'll help us with submissions. I'm gonna switch legs. Right now, his near side arm is underneath my right leg. I'm gonna open up, switch my hips, and bring my left leg under. Here my arm slides up. I'm grabbing his tricep, that works. Step over his head. Make this uncomfortable itself. I don't want to lean forward to finish, but I stay where I am. Rib cage to rib cage, hips forward. In reality, we do that very fast in competition or self-defense. With one another, we do it super slow because this comes out fast, right? You don't have a lot of time. I'm gonna snap that. But this is not so much of, of securing a tap, it's securing a break. Now, Steven knows this is an issue. I pass his guard, he tucks this. He gets his elbow to the mat. I don't have this available anymore. Good for Steven, I can't threaten this arm easily. I can threaten the far side. This was good for passing. This is good for control, this far side uh, underhook. But now we're gonna use it to isolate the far side arm and work for submissions. We're gonna stop halfway through a lot of the, play, uh, the way that people will, uh, usually get to. We're not gonna go for a far side um, elbow. Uh, a lock, arm lock. We're going to stop at eye position for now and go for a shoulder lock. So I have my hand under his, Steven's head. I have my shoulder applying pressure. I have my left arm as if, with an underhook at Steven. Now I'm going to connect to his shoulder or mine with this left hand. I'm going to remove my um, right hand. I'm going to place it on his face or on the ground. Pull up hard. If I'm here, cool. If I'm here, that's fine as well. This needs to be tight. I need this back exposure, all right? Back down, connect to his shoulder or mine, press in the face or the mat, pull up. You gotta pull up like you mean it. From here, I'm gonna step over his head and then get to the knees. I have a V with my arm. I have, most importantly, isolated his arm. It's connected to my chest. I'm gonna take my other arm, come underneath my left, make a V, connect to my right shoulder. I was here, come underneath, nice and tight. This hand connects with Steven's wrist, then I grab my own wrist. I keep the elbow connected to my own chest, and I push away from his body at roughly this type of right angle. You can also shove it low and bring it to the head, but for right now we're going here. One more time. I came through. 
I wanted this near side to even get to the mat. That's good for protecting the arm, but guess what it doesn't do? It no longer poses a barrier for me stepping over his head and reaching to the far side. So I pull up, easily access the back side because his arm is there to block it. Boxing his head with my knees. Connected here to my own shoulder in a V. Other arm comes underneath, nice and tight. Connect to my own shoulder in a V with the other hand. Grab his wrist with my left, grab my left wrist with my right hand. Keep this sucker connected, elbow to your chest. We don't want to try this stuff out here. We want to keep it here and move. This forearm is also the thing that's pinning it to my chest. Keep it here, slowly go that way. So there we have some options from the cross side after we pass. Ideally, we'd love to kill both sides, flare out a near side, get an underhook on the far side and threaten both. Eventually, our opponents get savvy to that, hit their elbow to the mat. That's good for protecting the near side arm, but it's really bad for preventing me from coming around to what was the far side. So the near side arm bar from side mount and a far side um, arm bar Kimura. One thing I'll go over in summary really quickly. If I'm in a cross side with Steven, and I'm going for this, you can come over and come all the way around for a straight arm lock. I think that's great. I just personally, oftentimes, I take it in stages. I gotta settle in here. I'm gonna keep a top position and try to finish from here. I think I don't lose position, I'm on top. This is a real situation I can punch, do damage, you know, wait for help. And if I'm having trouble with this finish, I can always go to the straight arm lock later. There's nothing that prevents me from going to the straight arm lock eventually. So I just like taking it in stages. If I can finish from the eye position, I'm gonna try to finish there first. Um, if that doesn't work, then I'll go all the way around. So elbow on the near side first, shoulder on the far side arm after both from side control. Again, this is Hamilias from Foundation Chicago. We got Steven, we got Jerry behind the camera. Look forward to seeing everyone in class. Thanks.